In an earlier presentation, we took a look at this signal here, which is a sequence of drum beats, and we heard that every second drum beat, or every odd drum beat, was of one type, and every even drum beat was of another type. So, if you haven't seen that video, you should really take a look at it. But in the video, uh, we showed how to differentiate between each drum beat by looking at the signal in the frequency domain. Now, it was done by hand, so the location of the drum beats was done manually by hand, and the analysis was also done by hand. And in this case, what I'd like to do is write a MATLAB script to do everything automatically. So, just to run through what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to identify the location of each drum beat. So each of these drum beats like here. So identify each of those locations automatically is what I'd like to do. Then what I'm going to do is extract out a frame of that data. Okay, Take the FFT of it in order to get the magnitude spectrum. And then we're going to look at, for each of these uh, drum beats, look at the magnitude spectrum and see if we can find any feature that stands out that will help us differentiate between the drum beats automatically. So that's the basic idea. Uh, now let's just try and do it. I'm going to use a MATLAB editor, so I can type edit at the command line to open up an editor. There we go. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is really work out how I'm going to identify when a drum beat occurs. Now if I look at this signal, there are some obvious features that differentiate or help me identify when a drum beat occurs. So there's this burst of energy here uh, that for each drum beat there's this big burst of energy. Every time the drumstick hits the drum membrane, it cr creates that burst of energy. Now, when I look at the negative, these, these, these strong negative peaks associated with each drum beat as well, and that's a very nice feature that I can use to identify when a drum beat occurs. So I'm going to use those negative peaks to identify when a drum beat occurs. So I can use a rule, whenever there's a sample less than minus 0 0.99, that's, that indicates that a drum beat has occurred. The first stage. And once I've identified when a drum beat occurs, I can then extract out a frame and use the built in FFT function in MATLAB to look at the magnitude spectrum. So, first things first, let's go through each sample and see when one of those samples is less than uh, minus 0 0.99. So the variable is IP that holds my drum signal. So I loaded that in earlier on. And if IPK, which is the current sample, is less than minus 0 0.99, that means that I found a drum beat, or at least I think I found a drum beat. What I'm going to do is display a little message to say that I have actually found it and I can verify that it actually works. So drumbeat found at sample number and I'm going to use a built-in function in MATLAB called num to string to convert the variable k which is the numerical value representing my sample number. I'm going to use that to um, use the built-in function to display the sample number. Uh, and I'll just put display message. I need to save the script. I'm going to just call it db. Um, and I'm going to run the script now to see what it is. Okay, so I can see drum beat found at sample number 108, 41,000, 83,000, 12,000. I have one, I've, yes, I have seven drum beats there, which corresponds to my um, figure. And I can also see from my figure they're all reasonably evenly separated. And these numerical values are also evenly separated by about 40,000 samples. So I'm confident that that worked well. So having found the location of my drum beat, I need to extract out a frame of data. So I'm going to create a variable called frame. And I'm going to need to specify the length of the frame. Now I'm going to take out about a tenth of a second, which would be about 4,000 samples because that signal was sampled at 44,100 samples. Okay, um, so that what that does, just to remind you, is frame will 
be a small sig uh, 4,000 samples long segment of the 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 drum beat. So the first 4,000 samples. So it's a time domain signal. That frame is a time domain signal. And what I do is convert it into frequency domain. I'm going to use the built-in function in MATLAB FFT to do that. So I'm going to perform a, an FFT analysis on the frame. All the information is stored in this variable FT and that contains both magnitude and phase information. So if you haven't seen the video on the FFT, maybe take a look at that now if what I'm saying doesn't make complete sense. Uh, but I want to look at the magnitude spectrum, so I'm going to create a variable called MagFT, which I'll use to store the magnitude information only. And the built-in function ABS can be used to extract out the, inf the magnitude information. Um, and then I'll plot the magnitude spectrum so that we can see what features stand out to help us differentiate between the various drum beats. Uh, and I'm going to use the pause command so that I can see each drum beat individually. And um, let's just run that. Just resize. Okay. Now I'm showing the entire FFT rather than just the first half. So um, for those who've seen the video on the FFT, you'll know that the complex that um, sorry the first half of the FFT is a mirror image of the second half. So what I'm going to do is quit that and only display. Hitting, I hit Control C to stop that script, and I'm going to just plot the first half of the FFT. So I'm going to display from bin number one up to bin 2000, rather than the entire uh, magnitude spectrum. So there's that's better. It'd be easier to analyze the data that way. So that's drum beat number one, drum beat number two, and you can see differences. They're subtle. There's three. Four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so every time I hit the space bar there, the pause command, we moved on from the pause command and displayed the next, the, the, well, we displayed the magnitude spectrum of the next drum beat. And we could see differences. Now, most of the differences were down in this lower frequency region down here. Um, so I might zoom in on just from bins number zero to 100 because that's where most of the changes were taking place. Uh, and actually rather than displaying the uh, 2000 bins of the FFT I might change this code a little bit just so I'm looking at the first 100 bins so just by changing that variable there to 100 I'll be only looking at the first 100 bins um, let's run that script again that one finished yeah. so I'll run it again click run so there's the first 100 bins of drumbeat number one Drum beat number two there, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. So we can see that there's some obvious differences. Um, it might be actually easiest if we do a subplot so that we can have uh, a few of the drum beats displayed at once. So I'm going to use the subplot command. Uh, I'll put plot two rows and two columns. Now we need a variable, which I'm going to call count, to select which uh, subplot we're going to plot to. So I'm just going to use this variable count to count each drum beat. Uh, and I need to initialize that equal to zero in order for this, uh, otherwise you get an error at this line the first time through the loop. And let's see, I'm only going to display the first four drum beats. So I really only want to do this if the count is less than five. I'll use the subplot. Now I don't want the pause anymore, so I'll end that if statement. I'll indent there, okay, and let's run that code. Okay, well that's better. So now let's just clarify. This is drum beat number one here. Drum beat number two is displayed here. Three and four. Now we know that the odd drum beats are of one type and the even drum beats are of another type. Um, so these are my odd drum beats, these two, and these two are my even drum beats. And we can see that there are differences. Um, you can see, for example, that at bin number, let's zoom in here, but at bin between 16 and, seven, 16 and 18, we have this large amplitude change. 
fact that bin number 17 is quite a large energy so it's above a magnitude of 200 so bin number 17 is a uh, magnitude greater than 200 um, let's just verify that for the second one so for the second one yeah it's also greater than well a lot greater than 200 so that's a feature that we can use now let's look over at the other type of drumbeat I might focus in on bin number 17 to see what its characteristics are so it's yeah it's well less than 200 so um, I could use a very basic rule to differentiate between the two drum beats. I could say that if bin number 17 is greater than 200, it's of one type, and if it's less than that, it's of another type. Now, that's not a very robust feature, but for the purpose of demonstration, that'll do. So, I might use that rule here. If mag ft bin number 17 is greater than 200 we're going to display a message we're going to say message is equal to um, type 1 um, drumbeat for uh, number and we'll use the number to string variable uh, number to string function again. Number. Well, we can put an else in here actually. So it's either of type one or of type two. Copy paste, put that type two, and then we'll display the message at the very end. Now let's run that script and see what happens. Okay, so I just might run it again so you can see what's happening at the at the command window. So I'll just run it again. You can see drum beat found at sample number one oh eight. Type one drum beat for, for number one. So that's drum beat number one is of type one. Drum beat number two is of type two. Drum beat number three is of type one, which is expected. So the even ones are all of type 2 and the odd ones are all of type 1. Okay, that was just a, a demonstration on how to automatically analyze the signal. Uh, I have to say that the features that I'm using um, are not very robust. Um, if I was developing this properly I'd be looking for more features because the more features that you have to differentiate between the various types of drum beat in this case um, the more robust your algorithm will be. Um, but hopefully it gives you some ideas about how you can automatically analyze signals. Okay, thanks for your attention.